And that's what 8.2 is about. 8.2 is how do I go about solving recurrence relations? And we already mentioned this before. This is just a repeat of things that we've done before. Uh, but done to a little bit more advanced techniques. Anyways, solving recurrence relations. How do I go about doing it? One is we just simply guess and check. Just guess out a solution and check it. We did that. I did that in that last lecture for like the Tower of Hanoi problem. The example was h sub n was twice h sub n minus 1 plus 1, where h sub 1 is equal to 1. This made a sequence of numbers. I plug in, I start off with the sequence, it ended up being 1. What's twice that plus 1? 3. What's twice that plus 1? 7. What's twice that plus 1? 15. What's twice that, twice that plus 1? 31. And I look at this and I notice that, oh, wait a second, this is one off the doubling sequence. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, I know it's the doubling sequence. And so this is just one below the doubling sequence, so I just go ahead and guess that h sub n is equal to 2 to the n minus 1. And how do you check? If that's the function, plug it back in. What do I do? I put this right here. Then what would go right here? Well, wherever I see n, I plug in n minus 1. So I plug in 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1, and I show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Yes, it's the solution. I guessed it. I checked it. It worked. That's how you do it. Guess and check is guess, and then plug it into your recurrence relation, and if your quality holds, you found it. And it generates my sequence, and so guess and check. The other approach to this was, instead of guess and check, was this idea of either going forward or going backward on iterations. So how would I do forward and backward iteration? Uh, an example of that. Let's go back to the coconut problem. a sub n is equal to 5 fourths of a sub n minus 1 plus 1. What's happening? The smaller pile versus the bigger pile. What's the bigger pile? The bigger pile is always 5 fourths of the smaller pile plus 1. That's what's happening as we do my problem. And so the iteration says that this formula always works. Well, if that's true, if a number is 5 fourths of the number before plus 1, what is a sub n minus 1? It is 5 fourths of the number before, which is a sub n minus 2, plus 1. Is everybody okay with that? But if I put that in there, it's 5 fourths all times that. So the 5 fourths would distribute through. And that's 5 fourths squared times a sub n minus 2 plus, and then the 5 fourths times this 1, which is 5 fourths, and then plus 1. All I did was take this and plug it in for the a sub n minus 1 and take this 5 fourths and distribute it, and I get that. But what's a sub n minus 2? It is 5 fourths of a sub n minus 3 plus 1. It's always 5 fourths of the previous plus 1. If I take 5 fourths squared and distribute that through, what would you get? I would get 5 fourths cubed, a sub n minus 3, plus 5 fourths squared, plus, and I still have these two guys tagging along, 5 fourths plus 1. Anybody getting the pattern? What's happening? a sub n would always be 5 fourths to whatever power, I'm just going to call it j. That's going to be a sub n minus j, and then what happens here? This 5 fourths keeps going down. It'll be 5 fourths cubed, and 5 fourths squared, and 5 fourths to the 1, and 1 is actually 5 fourths to the what? 0, right? When would this stop? When you have nothing left 
to subtract, right? You'd keep going down, 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 down until you get the very bottom. What's at the very bottom? Zero. What's the zero step? If that, if n minus j is supposed to be zero, what does j have to be? n. And so that means that my formula looks like this. 5 fourths to the n, a sub 0, plus 5 fourths to the n minus 1, plus, and it keeps on going down, 5 fourths squared, 5 fourths, 5 fourths to the 0, goes down, 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 down. Now we can take a little bit of a time out. What sum is that? Does that look familiar? This is a sum that we should recognize from our section on sequences and sums. This is a geometric sum, which is adding up a r to the k's. If we add up a geometric sum, I know immediately what the answer is. It's the next term. At, if I'm at 5 fourths to the n minus 1, who's next? 5 fourths to the n. It's the next term minus 1 divided by 5 fourths minus 1. So that means that this guy is going to be 5 fourths to the n minus 1 divided by 5 fourths minus 1. Something that we all should know. Anybody remember that formula at all? Covered it. <laughs> but that's just simply 4 times 5 fourths to the n minus 4. 5 fourths minus 1 is a fourth. Take a fourth, flip it, put 4 across everybody. We get that. That's kind of nice. A sub n is equal to 5 fourths to the n times a sub 0 plus 4 5 fourths to the n minus 4. And that means a sub n is equal to, hey, look, there's 2 5 fourths to the n. a sub 0 plus 4, 5 fourths to the n minus 4. Now, if I had my previous sequence, we would have to do things like if I wanted to get to a 100, I would need to generate a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 99, all the way up to a to 100. If I want to find a 100, what's the only thing I do? Plug 100 in for n, and you're done. That's the nice thing about plus. In other words, I've solved it. This is the solution. This is backwards iteration solution. So this is the solution. Let's actually cover the puzzle itself. The puzzle that was given for the coconut puzzle says, what is A5 given that A0, that 5 evenly divides A0? They didn't tell you the smallest pile. They just told you that it was evenly divided amongst five people. Well, A5 has to be what? It has to be A0 plus 4 times 5 fourths to the fifth power minus 4, which happens to be a0 plus 4 times 3,125 divided by 1,024 minus 4. Now, here's my question. a5 is an integer. If a5 is an integer and I'm dividing this side by 1,024, what does that tell you about that number to be able to get an integer? It has to be a multiple of 1,024. What's the smallest multiple of 1,024 you can think of? 1,024. So here's what I'm going to do. If those two divided to 1, if I just simply said, hey, I'm going to let a0 plus 4 equal 1,024. What does that make A0? 1,020. Is 1,020 divisible by 5? Yes. 
so it satisfies it. And when those two subtracted, so if I say A0 plus 4 is equal to 1024, and then that would tell us that A0 was 120, and that tells us that 5 divides 120, so yay, that works. But better yet, what's A5? Those simply cancel. It's 3, 1, 2, 5, minus 4, which is 3, 1, 2, 1. And we're done. But it also starts to set up the problem with you would have to go through things. How would I generate all possible solutions? We would say, well, all I know is A0 plus 4 has to be divisible by 1024. So let's tie 2048. But if I subtract 4 away from that, that's not divisible by 5. So uh, that wouldn't work. Right? Because every one of the middle steps would have to be in. And so you kind of play around with this a little bit. It becomes a diophantine equation. But at least the simplest one we can solve. And now you can start to play around with this puzzle, especially now that you have this formula. You can start to play around with this puzzle and do things like, um, what if I have three sailors? And we do this three times and there's a monkey. And so you start to play around and it's like, or if I have 10 sailors, you know, this problem all of a sudden becomes something that you can work out in a lot of different ways. And it's all straightforward in terms of, this is a recurrence relation but what's nice is getting close solutions. Now, here's the thing for you guys. How easy do you feel it was to go from here to there? Recognize that this was a geometric sum to get to that. It's one of the things we have to do it enough to recognize geometric sums. But does this use everything that you've learned within this class? Was there anything in here that was unusual? We talked about divisibility. We talked about sums. We talked about recurrence relations. And this was backwards iteration. Right? So this was all solvable by what's been presented.